via Garibaldi. Via Garibaldi, la strada delle vie... The very central street of Via Garibaldi is without a shadow of doubt the symbolic street of this maritime city and is already a new street. It possesses an enchanting beauty that was home to some of the wealthiest families of noble blood during the years of the Renaissance and was also the cradle of commercial power of the city of Genoa all over the world. A tourist who wants to plunge into this area of worldly beauty can do so by getting hold of a passepartout card for all of the palace museums in Via Garibaldi. The majority of the homes here, the nobles, had their moments of splendour in the 1600s, the golden century for the Genoese people. This is a typical example of epoch Genoese nobility an ability based on money rather than on possessions, land, etc. Before every other city, Genoa converted to money, to commerce, basing its wealth on the sales of goods and on the circulation of money. This typical example of a building also illustrates the profound being of the Genoese. The outside of the Renaissance-style building is rather serious and somber, but inside it explodes with the splendour of the frescoes and paintings that often reflect the families of the time and also the financial comings and goings. The great denaro has done with financial financial operations. The renaissanceal palaces are very refined, Esternamente sono sobri, ma internamente Mentre sono, sono molto pieni. decorati nella piena mentalità genovese. Perché non bisogna far vedere i genovesi. In this room we can observe frescoes of other grand wall cities of the epoch that were in a position to compete with Genova for its prestigious position. Eh sì, queste sono città eh, fortificate. Questa è Roma, San Pietro. Ancora. These cities include Florence, Milan, Rome and its Vatican City. Milano, con castello, anche lì sempre città fortificata, perciò molta attenzione alla fortificazione. Questa è Firenze, l'Arno, infatti c'è il riconoscibile Santa Maria del Fiore. Eh, chi sono i, i pittori? Perché nel caso di Bologna sarebbero i Carrà. This magnificent room boasts a frescoed ceiling that is the fruit of the more significant Genoese artists such as Giovanni Cambiaso and his son Luca. Already from the school of Michelangelo, Luca Cambiaso learnt all about great art in the city of Rome and then he brought it to Genoa and he bestowed upon the city his fabulous frescoes. Now we're entering the palace of Tobia Pallavicini, an opulent Genoese merchant who was able to profit from the monopoly provided to him by the Pope in the use of the mineral alum, a mineral used for the fixing of colour into textile material. This villa also belongs to that money-rich nobility typical of the Genoese. It has that sombre outside facade that leads to the opulence of the internal detailing. This room is particularly splendid. It is full of mirrors, gold, little angels with chandeliers and an enormous ceiling decoration telling stories of Olympus and the gods. Storie di Olimpo di dei naturalmente dentro a una cosa così così piena d'oro e mi diceva il presidente della Camera Paolo Odone the president of the Chamber of Commerce of Genova is waiting for us here 
and he explains a few of the details of the place to us. For example, the table is covered with a large damask tablecloth that hides an enormous mirror onto all of the work projects. A mirror that reflects all of the room and a veritable tornado of gold and mythological figures pours out onto the observer. Then the dimensions of the room are so perfect and well proportioned that all of this opulence of art seems to blend in perfectly well with the internal area without any kind of color clashing or phenomena of that nature. It is so beautiful that it looks like a little Versailles.